Okay, um, I think we can start. Um, this is just a few, you can ask some questions about the presentations. I think we'll be done. After I answer your questions, maybe I will we'll just talk for 30 minutes maybe. I think like ideally, can people hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, so this is ideally for people going to write the exam immediately and people have joined, who've joined us. But um, I can just say, if you have um, some questions, you can just ask on what we've talked about. Really, that's, 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 the, that's the end of term exam and that's the end of year exam. To, uh, ex end of exam OSCE. That's the format. There's nothing new that will come up. Just get all those aspects in order for your OSCE exam. Of course, your theory is just trying to know how broad you are. So your 10 teachers, have you read your guy in 10 teachers end to end? Have you read your OBS 10 teachers end to end? That's what your theory exam is asking. Your OSCE exam is asking, have you been on the word? Have you gotten any skills at all? Yeah, that's, that's really it for now. But anyway, um, there's no one with questions, we move on. If there's no question, somebody should say there are no questions. There are no questions, Dr. Shanzi. Okay, so let's do the last one then. Doctor. What? I have a question. Yes, I've been asking for a question for a while now. Sorry. I want to find out uh, from the timetable, I've seen there's uh, paper one and paper two. Now I want to find out about paper one. Is it going to be MCQ or like uh, just the choosing the best answer? Which paper one, for which class, for which? Uh... The one, January, 2019. January, 2019. The, yes, the, as we are about to have the exams. Is that MBCHB? Yes, doctor. Oh, okay. So for the final, final exam, you have paper one. Paper one is obstetrics. So it has your multiple choice questions, usually like maybe between 50 and 100. And then it has your short notes or clinical scenarios. That's paper one. Then paper two is gyne. Your gynecology paper has multiple choice, again, somewhere in between 50 and 100 multiple choice questions and short notes and scenarios. Then you have a paper three. Paper three is your OSCE exam. Then the last one is your, your CA, your continuous assessment. So you know that your, your, for everyone, your continuous assessment is 40%, your exam is 60%. So that's how the exam is set. So that's paper one, that's paper two, and that's paper three. Then your continuous assessment. Does that answer your question? Yes, you have. Yeah. OK, um, that's, all, that's how it's going to be. Any other questions? OK, no other questions. So let's, let's just quickly go through this thing. Can you see the slides? Yes. What does it say? OBGYN introductory lecture. Okay, so yeah, let's let's go through this quickly. Yeah, so I I think this we already know that um, for those coming to the department for a lot for the first time. It's a sensitive department, you know, no pictures in labor ward. You don't put on your status on Facebook that I'm in labor ward and so on. Yeah, it's sensitive because maternal deaths are a big issue as well. Um, 
And also we have this issue of respect for maternity care. And the tutorial on respect for maternity care is there. You can just check it out. Uh, I presented it, maybe I can present it for the new groups again, because this is a tutorial that all the new groups uh, should have. So um, you know what the objectives are, and these are reflected in your OSCE exam. You need to know how to take a history. You need to know how to talk to patients, counseling. Um, you need to know how to examine a patient. So you need to know how to do an obstetric exam, a general physical exam. Um, you need to know how to do a neurological exam, of course, a basic one, because we have all those eclamptic patients who are fitting. So we need to know how to do a basic neurological exam, a basic cardiovascular exam, a basic abdominal exam, because in GAIN, we are examining patients' abdomens all the time. When they come with ectopic, when they come with a molar, you need to do, know how to do a VE. So you find a, a model in the exam saying, do a vaginal exam. So you need to know how to do that. And of course, you need to participate in deliveries. Even just weighing the placenta, examining a placenta, participate, don't just be watching. The common comment I'm hearing these days is that no, they're not allowing us to deliver, but even that you're not doing anything. You're not even examining placentas. You're not doing anything at all. You're not assisting even. So we need to participate actively. Then of course, we've already talked about after you take a history, you need to be able to do appropriate investigations and give us a reasonable management. And you need to know how to resuscitate a baby and resuscitate a newborn. On obstetric exam, if the patients can't allow you, in the exam, what you are doing is you are just acting. You are acting out what you've been practicing. So you can even have a, you can even have a, your friend with a fake pregnancy, then you go through the whole process of um, examining a patient. I think that that would help because then you've practiced and then when you come in the exam, and unfortunately these days we, we are not having real patients because you are so many. So you find a dummy there and so on. But the idea is that you're just going to, to act out the way you've been examining the patients. So that's all I can say about um, the objectives when you come to this department. So take a history, know how to talk to patients. And then there's that bullet, the third bullet there is that you know, you need to know the obstetric language. So I've already given some of you this, these things. In your theory exam, I usually put this question as question one. Define the following. Because if you are in OBS and GAIN, you need to have our language. Otherwise, you get lost. It's like going to Western province and you want to work in a clinic there or going to wherever, to Southern province and you work in a clinic there. You need to know the basic language, otherwise you get lost. People are saying parity on labor ward, you don't know what it is. They're saying a prime gravida, you don't know what it is. They are saying this is an elderly prime, you don't know what it is. They are saying this is an aliparas, you don't know what it is. So just be, aware of all these uh, terminologies, presentation, lie, position, attitude. When we say second trimester, it's from what week to what week. When we say first trimester, it's from what week to what week. When we say crowning, what do we mean? When we say sensiput, what do we mean? When we say occiput, what do we mean? When we say asyncletism, what do we mean? Even the abbreviations you should know. When we say PPH, what it is? you need to know what is menopause. Because again, when we are talking on the word, we just say this woman is menopausal. No one stands to ask what, what does menopausal mean? So you need to get as one of your first lessons. And that's why I've made it a point that when you are doing your, your end of rotation exam, we need to see that you have, you have grasped the language of our department. So this 
this question will be there to just check that you've grasped the language of OBS and Guy department. What's a, oh, and the politics as well. You know that we don't say abortion, we say miscarriage. We don't say criminal abortion, we say unsafe abortion. Uh, there are things that we don't encourage. Some people say precious baby. What does that mean? Isn't every baby precious? But sometimes that terminology is used in the department. If somebody has been infertile for 30 years, now they are, they are pregnant. So people will say, will say precious baby and things like that. Uh, some people don't know the difference between augmentation and induction. So they say we are augmenting the labor or we are, we are inducing when they're actually augmenting the labor. So all these, um, when we say engaged, what do we mean? When we say gestation age, what do we mean? We know when we say gestation age, we are starting from the date of the last normal menstrual period. So it's not a real gestation age. The gestation age we are talking about is actually two weeks late. That, that fetus is not 42 weeks. It's actually 40 weeks because of the, of the starting point for, for counting. Because ovulation happens two weeks after the last normal menstrual period. So the gestation age, the real gestation age is actually two weeks less than the gestation age we record. So all those technicalities you are supposed to know. What's an embryo? What's a fetus? Should know that a fetus starts at around eight to 10 weeks, depending on your starting point. Are you starting from the point of fertilization or you are starting from the point of the last normal menstrual period? So all those funny technicalities, who's a neonate, who's an infant, who's a child, all that stuff. So terminology, terminology, terminology. It just shows that you've been through the department. You are not a lost sheep. Because if you don't know parity, Again, if I'm the one marking your paper and I see you don't know parity, I just switch off. I stop reading the rest of the things. It means that you haven't been there. For you not to have known parity after being in the department for six weeks, eight weeks, then there's something wrong. For you not to know what a prime gravida is, it means where have you been? For you not to know what naliparas means, where have you been? So this is really important. For me, it's a, it's a fail pass question. So if I see somebody struggling with basic obstetric terminology, it means that they should fail because it means they don't belong. So I usually uh, in your exam would put 20 of these. And then I would say 10 marks, half for each one you get right. So that, that would be about this. So I've, uh, I've spent so much time on it for obvious reasons, because you can't get this station wrong. These are not the only terminologies, but I've tried to put as many as I can for the purposes of this um, tutorial to show that this is important. So the abbreviations there, EDD, height of fundus. What is height of fundus compared to cephisio fundal height? What is ARM, artificial rupture of membranes, antepartum hemorrhage, DSD, disorders of sexual development, last normal menstrual period, bad obstetric history. This, this is really our language. You just say ABGA scores nine. No one cares what ABGA means no one cares about Virginia, Abga, the one who came up with an Abga score, no one cares. Everyone just says Abga score and they assume everyone knows what we are talking about. And then there are positions. What is lithotomy position? What seems position? What's a knee chest position? What is supine position? What is recovery position? So on the word, we just tell you, no, put this patient in recovery position. No one will start defining what recovery position is. So just be aware of this perineum. And the funny one, the funny one is vagina. Even medical students don't know what vagina is. They think the vulva is the vagina. 
They don't know what is perineum, what is vagina, what is vulva. There's confusion. So when I'm, I'm talking in the meeting like this, I would say the vagina is the tunnel. That's the easy way to put it. And we should not be confused. Then the vulva is what you see when, when a woman opens the legs, when you are trying to examine them. So don't, don't confuse vulva vagina, it's, it's embarrassing. And postnatal, quickening, show. We know term, what is term? Term is 37 weeks to 42 weeks gestation age. It's a period of five weeks from 37 weeks to 42 weeks, that is term. When you go beyond 42 weeks, you are post term. And we have already have a tutorial on post term pregnancy. If you are below 37 weeks, you are preterm. And also on term, there's what is called early term, full term, late term, post term. So all those things are part of this term because term is a period of five weeks. So it's been divided into early term, late term, full term, and then there's a post term there as well. So that's about uh, that. This is just emphasizing the important uh, terminology. Then on your knowledge, we already talked about your guy and 10 teachers. That, this is what your theory paper is trying to assess. Have you read through your 10 teachers? Then of course, I'm trying to make as many tutorials as possible so that we have all the tutorials in one place so that you people can concentrate uh, on the um, on the surgical, on the, on the procedures. Because right now you're trying to organize tutorials in your units. You leave the, the clinical area that you're going to have a tutorial. We need to make sure that you spend as much time as possible with patients, trying to clerk the patients, trying to examine the patients. That's what the majority of your time should be. Being in theater, seeing the procedures, being in labor at seeing the procedures, that's what you should spend the majority of your time on. Not on the theoretical tutorials, because we can find a place for, for this. Hopefully we can have all of the tutorials. It's not that tutorials will be abolished, but just that um, we need to change the way we are, we are working. Because people end up just being in lectures the whole day. And that's why when I'm trying to give the tutorials, these tutorials I give, I try to do them after 16 because I'm assuming that everyone is out of the words by that time, unless they are on call. So that is why I choose 16 because I don't want you to leave theater that we have a tutorial with Dr. Shanzi. I think that doesn't make any sense because this is clinical medicine you are doing. You're supposed to be on the word. So if there's a tutorial, ideally it should be after 16 when people are out of the words and then you are trying to clarify a few things that you saw, you saw on the word. So that's, that's how that should work. And hopefully um, in due time, it will work like that. So yeah, the attitude, you need, we need to all be having a couch of learning. We all need to continue reading not just to pass exams. We need to be truthful. Um, you people are writing in logbooks things that you didn't do, things that you never saw, you're asking people to sign and so on and so forth. We need to be truthful, we need to keep time. Hobbs and Gain is really about trying to keep time. And then of course we need to respect our patients and we need to respect our teachers. That is, these are very important attitudes for OBS and guide. Don't just get information from patients and run away. Ask for permission. Um, learn from patients, but assist. When there's, the patient needs blood, be, go to the lab and get blood for them. If a patient needs um, blood withdrawn, participate in withdrawing blood. Don't just um, learn on patients without helping out patients on the ward. So these are your learning opportunities. You have your major rounds, you have your lectures. Unfortunately, seminars have become very rare. 
But like I'm saying, we need to revive the seminars. So seminars are, are that you people clerk a patient, maybe four of you clerk a patient. So one presents the history, one presents the examination, one presents the investigations, and one presents the management. And then um, we discuss as a group, the way we are on this forum, we are 100 of us. So people can ask the questions on the presentation and so on and so forth. I think we need to revive that. So um, on that aspect, what I'm asking is that if you have a case that is interesting and you've clerked with your colleagues, you can tell me that there's a case we want to present so that we have a tutorial like we are having, but, but it's But it, it is the students who are talking. There's somebody who's making noise. Can we mute ourselves? Yeah, so that's about seminars. So if you have a patient that you've clerked, and you want to present so that we are all in this forum like this, even at 16 hours, even at 14 hours, we can arrange a time so that you participate in your own, in your own learning. You don't let other people take control of your own learning. So you clerk a patient with four of your colleagues, then you present in this forum the way I'm presenting. Then we can discuss how the patient was managed, how they should be managed and so on. Let's be active. So group tutorials, theater, clinics, labor ward, departmental meetings. You know, we have departmental meetings, maternal mortality meetings. We have clinical presentations about different cases. You should just um, participate and, and cause, of course. So all those are learning opportunities. Then somebody already asked this question. This is how it's arranged. Your continuous assessment, and your final exam, your logbook. So in the continuous assessment, you have your logbook, your OSCE exam, and your theory paper. In your final exam, you have paper one, paper two, and paper three. Paper three is OSCE, paper two is gynecology, and paper one is um, obstetrics. That is how your exam is arranged. I think that was the last slide. So I'll just um, invite any questions on these are the expectations and these expectations end up in your OSCE exam. That's why I was saying that um, it would be good for the people writing the exam, uh, writing the end of rotation and the people are coming in to listen to this because then you are prepared for, uh, for what is to come. So yeah, any questions before we finish? Uh, Dr. Shans. Yes. Uh, I just say concern and suggestion. Yes. We can't hear you. Hello. Hello. Can anyone hear me? Yes, we are here. Oh, so the man has just disappeared. Anyway, does anyone else have a question so that we, we move on? We all do other things. Hello? Yes. What internet do yes. you have? I say that it's a bit pathetic here in Eastern Province, but I was saying, is it possible for for you to record and send the recorded for those who are going to miss the session? Maybe they're on the word or on call. Or... Yes, I always record and I always share. So I think what you need to do is or in theater, for those who miss what you able to yeah. send the recorded one. Yeah. So just um, just do a send me. A, you have my number. Yes. Yeah, send me on WhatsApp your, 
your line, then I can send it and then you can share with everyone. But we have, um, right, I'm also putting it on that YouTube channel. I don't know if you've seen it. Maybe you can resend. Some of us just send the phone. So if you resend it, we also follow it and also follow up with the WhatsApp. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you send your WhatsApp, I'll share the, the thing. Just send a message to me. African gynecologist right. tutorials. That's that's what it is. So we can just look for it and check all the tutorials. I think I've mentioned a lot of tutorials that are already there. It's just trying to standardize the tutorials and helping you know how deep you should go and how superficial you should go. Yeah, so I'll, I'll share that. Any other concerns? Are there any other concerns? Yes, Dr. Shanzi. Yes. Uh, it's concerning the end of rotation for the licentiate students who are just done, who, who, have, who are done with the obs and gain rotation. At Levy. I want to find out. Is it at Levy or somewhere else? Is it at Levy or somewhere yes, else? Yes, at Levy. Okay. At Levy. Yes, go on. Yes, uh, I want to find out on the OSC part, how many stations should we, are we expecting? And on the theory part, are we going to have uh, multiple choice, short, uh, short questions and the long essay questions? It's usually the same format I've mentioned. Okay. So the same format, everyone gets a similar format. So the OSC station, and like I said already, they are between 10 and 12. And the types of questions you expect I've shared as well in the, in the okay. presentation. And then um, your exam is being prepared by Dr. Nkole and it's next week. I just talked to her. Next, what? Next week, when exactly, the date? Uh, she didn't say exactly, but it's next week. I okay, know the, okay. the UNILA students might have the exam on, on Monday or Tuesday, depending on what the HOD resolves. So it's either Monday or Tuesday, if any UNILA people are still here. Yeah. Okay, Doc, thank you. Yeah, it's Monday or Tuesday. So for, for the other... Uh, for the licentiates, um, it's within the week somewhere. I can't say because I'm not preparing that and I'm not, I won't be around. Yeah. Okay. Any other burning issues? Because exams are burning issues. Yes, Doc. Yes. Yes, I just want to, I'm a university student. I just want to find out whether for university student, is it you or Dr. Nkore who said, uh, who said the exam? Who's setting this one? Yeah, yes, the for UNRWA students, yes, the end of rotation, the exam, is it you or Dr. Nkore? Who's setting this particular exam? Yes. It's uh, me and Dr. Nkore. All right, Doc, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any other issues? Yes, Doc, that's clarity uh, for Apex. Is it like uh, for OSC and logbook, like logbook five, OSC 15, and then the theory 20, or how is it like for 40%? Or oh, the 40%, how is it divided? Ah, that one, that one is a tricky one because you know where the problem is? The problem we have right now is the logbook. And again, this is for everyone. So in your, in your, in your logbooks, the way the, the, the marks allocated to the logbook are not really what we allocate at the end because the logbook is not taken seriously. So most consultants are saying, we can't give so much weight to the logbook because students are just writing what they didn't do and things like that. So it's something we are working on now to make the logbook um, say what it's supposed to say, because it's not saying what it's supposed to say. So we are working on that. So what we normally do is that we put the logbook as just one of the stations in your, in your OSCE. So if you have 10 stations, your logbook is station 11. Or sometimes we, we make it equivalent to two stations. So it means your logbook will carry, if you have 10 stations, your logbook is equivalent to two stations because we feel that the, it's not being 
taken with the seriousness it deserves. So we are still trying to figure out. That's what I can say in terms of logbook. Then your theory and your, your, your theory and logbook, your theory and OSCE, the percentage is 60-40. That's the general feeling. People feel the OSCE should carry a bit of weight than the, than the theory, because this is a clinical rotation. So your OSCE is trying to check what your clinical skills are like. So people want to give it a bit of weight. The other way people give it a bit of weight, which we are not applying, is that it will be 50-50. Your, your OSC is 50% and your theory is 50%. But if you fail your OSC, then you, 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 you can't be compensated by your theory. That's another thing that people do to try and send the message that your OSCE is more important than your theory. So if you get 90% in your OSCE and get 45% um, in your theory, your OSCE will balance up your theory. It means you've passed. But if you get 90% in your theory and 40% in your OSCE, you haven't passed. Even if when we add, it becomes 50%. So we need to be aware of those technicalities, which are usually in the board of examiners meetings. So just be aware that the OSCE is given a bit more weight than the, than the theory. So just make sure you don't fail your OSCE. That is really, really important because it gives a message that you were a distant student doing a clinical, a, a, doing a clinical rotation at home. You are just reading in your bedroom. You never stepped foot on the word. That's what. That's how we interpret you failing the OSCE. So please just be aware of that. Of that situation. Or that that issue. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? Yes. So we only have six minutes, and then we are done, 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 done. So please ask quickly. All right, I have a question for us like uh, licentiates in other sites. How are we going uh, supposed to make our um, CAs? Because we only have assessments, but we don't have OSC here. So yeah. how do we make our CAs? That's really, yeah, that's really unfortunate. Yeah, because we are supposed to standardize, uh, but there are other technical university problems that I can't talk about here. That's why you might not have the same kind of assessment. But I think we can talk about that outside the meeting, the differences in the assessments. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Because Doc, I wanted to ask yeah, for us uh, APEC student. Yeah. Hello? Yes, I can we can hear you. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. I was asking for us. I was asking for us APEC students yeah. who are writing the final exams. The January yeah. 2019. Yeah. Is the OS going to be physical or projected? Yeah, for Apex, unfortunately, it's it's usually projected. Yeah, so I'm what sure about on the what about on the section of multiple choice? Is it going to be true or false or choose the best answer? We've moved on from true and false. We do single best answer. And I think we are going to add negative marking since there's only one answer there. Yeah, but it's single, oh, okay. yeah, single best answer in Thank you, Yeah, single best answer. Any other concerns? There's five minutes left. So we've stopped true and false. We do single best answer. Any other concerns? Um, Dr. Shanzi, I wanted to ask, who is preparing the paper for APEX for the final exam? For which one? Or oh, for the uh, final the exam? exam oh. Why are you people concerned about those things? What's the problem? What, how does that help, just for my information? I've heard that question repeatedly. So we are all submitting questions since it's a final exam. 
So the consultant submit a question and somebody puts it together, usually your coordinator. So on what I've taught you, all the tutorials I've done, I'll submit my questions and then other consultants on the, in your various sites who submit their questions and then it's put, it's put together. That's usually how the final exam is done. Because you people are in different sites, some are in Indola, some are in Mutendere, some are in UTH. So ideally everyone, all the consultants in different sites contribute questions, then somebody consolidates one paper. That's how it's done. Any other questions? Was that clear? Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay, any other questions? Okay, so um, thank you for attending the meeting. Um, so just remember what I said, if you have a case to present, you group up, just be active. Uh, tell me I can find a moderator or I can moderate myself so that we are more practical. We are doing things, not, not just listening like this. Yeah, okay, thank you for listening. I'll post the, um, all the three tutorials we've had today on, on the, on the forum and I'll share with everyone who's been here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you.